In this video, we will discuss hemorrhagic stroke, its features, causes, and the most common sites of the hemorrhage in brain, and the treatment and investigations of the hemorrhagic stroke. Intracerebral hemorrhage accounts for 10% of all stroke, and 50% of the patients die. Hemorrhage causes abrupt onset of focal neurological deficits worsening in about one hour with decreased level of consciousness and signs of increased intracranial pressure. So the features are abrupt onset of focal neurological deficits, decreased level of consciousness and increased intracranial pressure. So what determines the prognosis of hemorrhagic stroke? The volume and location of hematoma determines the prognosis. A supratentorial hematoma of less than 30 milliliter have good prognosis. So what are the features of bad prognosis? Features of bad prognosis are number one hematoma of more than 60 milliliter, number two decreased level of consciousness, number three increased intracranial pressure, number four extensions in the ventricles and number five posterior fossa location. So the features of bad prognosis are hematoma of more than 60 ml, decreased level of consciousness, increased intracranial pressure, extension into the ventricle and by location posterior fossa. What are the features of large hematoma? Stupor. Why? Due to compression of brain stem. What are the causes of intracerebral hemorrhage or intraparenchymal hemorrhage? Hypertension is the most common cause of intraparenchymal hemorrhagic stroke. Other causes of intracerebral hemorrhages are ABCD and 2T. A. Amyloid angiopathy, aneurysms and malformations. B. Blood dyscrasias, example thrombocytopenia and A. Fibrinogenemia. C. Cocaine addiction, amphetamine also. D. Drugs, fibrinolytic, antiplatelet and anticoagulant. And 2Ts, trauma or head injury and tumors. And ischemic stroke can also cause hemorrhage in the brain. The first cause in our list was amyloid angiopathy. Let's discuss this. In amyloid angiopathy, there are multiple recurrent hemorrhages that occur over months and years. Amyloid angiopathy hemorrhage number two is the most common cause of low bar hemorrhages in elderly. So there are multiple hemorrhages with time and number two, they are usually low bar hemorrhages in elderly. How the diagnosis of amyloid angiopathy is done? Number one, micro bleed seen on MRI. And number two, it's diagnosed by Congo red staining of amyloid in cerebral blood vessels. And let's discuss the features of hemorrhages in different lobes which occur in amyloid angiopathy hemorrhages. Low bar hemorrhages is mostly small micro bleed. Frontal hemorrhages causes arm weakness. Parietal hemorrhage produces hemisensory deficit. So the frontal hemorrhage causing only motor weakness and parietal hemorrhage causing hemisensory deficit. Large hemorrhage produces stupor and coma due to midbrain compression. Left temporal hemorrhages produce aphasia and delirium and occipital hemorrhage produce hemianopia. The next cause is cocaine. Why cocaine causes hemorrhage? Cocaine increases sympathetic activity that causes acute severe hypertension leading to hemorrhage. Cocaine can also cause ischemic stroke and subarachnoid hemorrhage. What's the most common cause of hemorrhagic stroke in young people? Cocaine is the most common cause of hemorrhage in young people. Next is head injury or trauma. Most common sites of bleeding in head injury are are temporal and inferior frontal lobes. The anticoagulants bleeding due to anticoagulants evolve slowly. It's a slow process of bleeding that develop in 24 to 48 hours and it can occur anywhere. Metastatic tumor next. The metastatic tumor which are most commonly associated with intracerebral bleeding are choriocarcinoma, malignant melanoma, renal cell carcinoma and bronchogenic carcinoma. Now the bleeding sites. So what are the most common bleeding sites? The most common bleeding sites are putamen and posterior limb of the internal capsule. Number two thalamus. Number three, 3 
pons and number four cerebellum let's discuss bleeding in putamen and posterior limb of internal capsule bleeding putamen is the most common site of bleeding and it causes damage to the internal capsule also that causes contralateral hemiplegia and facial involvement and slurred speech posterior limb of internal capsule bleeding causes contralateral hemiparesis upper motor neuron type of hemiparesis with hypertonia hyperreflexia spasticity and weakness there is facial weakness speech slurred and eye deviates away from the site of hemiparesis. The features of bleeding in putamen are not that many but it may cause uh, Parkinsonism and hemibilismus. Next site is thalamus. Bleeding in thalamus causes deficit in all sensory modalities plus contralateral hemiparesis or hemiplegia the upper motor neuron type i already discussed it above due to compression of the internal capsule so internal capsule is a structure which may be compressed in a bleeding in putamen and thalamus both and homonymous hemianopsia also occur in thalamic hemorrhage because of the lateral geniculate body which has the fibers of the optic nerve passing through that to the occipital cortex so it causes visual field defect an important feature of thalamic bleeding is that there is deviation of the eyes downwards and inwards looking at the nose number two there are unequal pupil with absent pupillary light reflect there is vertical gaze palsy and later there is degerine rousey syndrome or contralateral pain syndrome in thalamic hemorrhage but that occur later not immediately next we discuss the bleeding in the pons bleeding in the pons causes deep coma and quadriplegia so deep coma with quadriplegia should be distinct from the locked in syndrome in infarction in the pons where there is quadriplegia also but the patient is alert and well oriented but he cannot move or speak in that condition of lock, uh, locked in syndrome or in infarction of the pons so here there is deep coma and quadriplegia developing within minutes quickly developing pinpoint reacting pupil is a feature of a bleeding in the pons there is horizontal gaze palsy because the horizontal gaze center is in the pons next we discuss the bleeding in the cerebellum so what happens in the bleeding in the cerebellum occipital headache vertigo vomiting and ataxia there may be ipsilateral sixth nerve palsy and involuntary closure of one eye and blepharospasm dysphagia and dysarthria and after a few hours in a bleeding in the cerebellum causes a stupor and coma why due to brain stem compression or hydrocephalus so the bleeding in the cerebellum causes features like labyrinthitis a vertigo vomiting headache additionally there are closure of one eye and blepharospasm dysphagia and dysarthria and then there is a stupor and coma after a few hours due to brain stem compression or hydrocephalus now investigations of the hemorrhagic stroke apart from cbc the platelet count should be tested because of the thrombocytopenia prothrombin time and partial thromboplastin time for coagulopathy ct imaging detects acute focal hemorrhages ct can differentiate between hemorrhage and infarction how long does the x-ray evidence of hematoma remains positive after two weeks x-ray features of the clotted blood diminish but in some cases after two weeks a rim of contrast appear which persist for months when cause of hemorrhage remains uncertain mri ct angiography and conventional x-ray angiography are done so what about the lp in these patients lumbar puncture should be avoided since these patients have high intracranial pressure that may cause cerebral herniation now treatment of the hemorrhagic stroke in hemorrhagic stroke blood pressure should be lowered to less than 130 because hypertension is the most common cause of hemorrhage preferred drugs are non vasodilating drugs given iv examples are nicardipine labetalol or asmolol what's the treatment of severe hypertension treatment of severe hypertension is with recombinant factor 7a why because it decreases the risk of hematoma expansion what's the treatment of cerebellar 
cellular hematoma. Cerebellar hematoma of more than 3 cm diameter requires surgical evacuation. Patients with hematoma between 1 to 3 cm diameter are required careful observation for impaired consciousness and respiratory failure. So if the hematoma is more than 3 cm, surgical evacuation and observation for a hematoma of between 1 to 3 cm diameter. Okay, what are the treatments of normal and increased intracranial pressure in hemorrhagic stroke? If intracranial pressure is normal, intracranial pressure often remains normal, but large hematoma cause midline shift with obtundation, coma or hydrocephalus. So the treatment for midline shift normal Normal intracranial pressure is osmotic agents coupled with induced hyperventilation. What's the disadvantage of hyperventilation? Hyperventilation causes vasoconstriction and ischemia, so it should be done for short duration. Number two, if the intracranial pressure is high, CSF is drained and osmotic therapy continued. Number three, if the intracranial pressure remains elevated, then surgical evacuation of hematoma. What's the treatment? of bleeding due to drugs. Infusion of prothrombin complex concentrate followed by fresh frozen plasma and vitamin K rapidly reverses coagulopathy. So the treatment of bleeding due to drugs is prothrombin complex concentrate followed by fresh frozen plasma and vitamin K. What's the treatment of bleeding due to thrombocytopenia? If platelet count is less than 50,000 then transfusion of fresh platelets. Next cerebellar hemorrhage of more than 3 cm in diameter or with hydrocephalus should undergo urgent neurosurgical evacuation.